Hey guys, it's Alex and welcome to the Geeks Table. This video should have found its way to the channel much, much earlier and initially I planned to feature only this MacBook Air on M1 chip, but just before the recording I decided to connect an external display to this notebook and it switched off. And since then I cannot turn it on no matter what I tried, so I'll probably send it back to Apple to make it repaired. And luckily I had all the measurements done by that time. So I ordered the MacBook Pro on M1 chip and now I'm ready to share with you all the results of my test. We'll be comparing four devices, MacBook 12 inch with i5 CPU and 16 gigabytes of RAM, MacBook Pro 15 inch with i7 CPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM, the MacBook Air with new M1 chip and 8 gigabytes of RAM and MacBook Pro 13 inch with M1 chip and 8 gigabytes of RAM. We shall check how fast is the Android Studio in indexing and compiling, how does Android NDK work here and also we'll check out the emulators. And again, this video is sponsored by myself, so I just share and you make the final decision. So I've used this MacBook Air for about a week before it died and then this MacBook Pro for another week. And I can say that both of them are good travel companions. And by the way, in case you use the Android file transfer, it works here without a problem, don't worry. Now let's check the Android Studio. I used this version and this configuration across all the machines. And at the moment of recording, neither Android Studio or NDK are ported to M1. So once you launch it for the first time, it will ask you to install Rosetta 2. So what I did, I just tried launching Android Studio and nothing else, leaving all the machines working from the battery. And then I opened my pet project. It's relatively big and also divided into modules. And then I just invalidated the caches and restarted the Android Studio. So it had to index the files and also rebuild the solution. I did it continuously for 10 times to see if there is any throttling and actually MacBook 12 managed to do it in 3 minutes for 5 times but then we start to see the throttling and the time got increased by almost 40 seconds. MacBook Pro 15 kept doing it within 1 minute and like 12 seconds but it also had to launch fans twice during the test. MacBook Air kept spending around 2 minutes and 35 seconds and I couldn't notice any throttling. And keep in mind that this is a fanless machine, so it's a remarkable result. MacBook Pro did it in 2 minutes and 20 seconds and also kept it on the same level and it didn't ever turn a fan at all. Then I decided to change my code a little bit, you know, like changing two values and declare another variable as if I'm debugging something. And then I deployed it to the device. I also repeated it for 10 times, like editing and deploying, and here are the results. The MacBook 12 did it in 40 seconds or so, and since the change was not that huge, it didn't throttle at all. MacBook Pro 15 did it in around 25 seconds, with no fans turned on, which is good. The MacBook Air did it in around 37 seconds, and surprisingly, MacBook Pro 13 did it for 3 seconds longer. Also, I've tried to simulate the case of UI debugging by changing a few small parameters in the layout files and deploy it to the device again. And I also did it for 10 times and here are the results. At first, MacBook 12 kept doing it for like 45 seconds, but closer to the end, the time started increasing. I believe that it's because I did this test just right after the previous one, so the poor MacBook didn't have time to cool down and we hit the throttling line. MacBook Pro 15 kept doing it in like 35 seconds, with no fans by the way, and both MacBook Air and MacBook Pro 13 were doing it for around 40 seconds. But again, surprisingly Air was a few seconds faster. Now a few words about the emulators. If we go to the emulators that are based on the x64 or x86, and then we'll try to start them, we shall see that they simply cannot be started because the virtualization is not yet supported. You may start the ARM64 emulator because basically these are ARM64 devices and the emulator is an ARM64 device, but when I tried testing it, it took me crazy 32 minutes to just launch the emulator and see its desktop, so it's a no-go solution for production. I also thought about the Genymotion third-party emulators 
but they require a VirtualBox to be installed and because VirtualBox is not yet ported to M1, it refuses to start and we don't solve the problem. There is an alpha version of the emulators for the M1 provided by Google, but the functionality is still limited and should be only used if you don't have any device with you at all. So for now, let's just agree that we don't have any working emulator on the M1 devices. Now the NDK. I took a script of my friend which compiles the FFmpeg into Android libraries, pretty useful script, and it uses the Android SDK and Android NDK. I shall post a GitHub link in the description so you may measure the compiling time on your machine and compare it with my results. I did an instant compilation and recompilation for like 10 times and the results might surprise you. The MacBook 12 started with around 7 minutes and raised to 8 minutes and 30 seconds closer to the end. The MacBook Pro 15 kept doing it for like 2 minutes and 5 seconds, much faster, but it kept fans running from the very beginning. And closer to the end of the experiment it even started throttling and the completion time went up. And now the cool part, the MacBook Air did it in 2 minutes and 6 seconds with no throttling at all, which is the same result as the MacBook Pro 15. And the MacBook Pro 13 did it even faster, in 1 minute and 38 seconds. And the working fan helped it to keep this time till the end of the experiment. Well, an emulated software with no active fans gives the same result as a spec'd out system. And the device with an active cooling gives even a better result. So, if you cannot wait until they reveal the MacBook Pro 16 inch on M1X CPU or whatever they will call it, and you wish to buy one of these devices right now as your companions, I would probably suggest you to go with the MacBook Air. Because it's lighter and it's cheaper, and Pro doesn't give you that much more of a value, and it's heavy and has the same amount of ports. But if you can wait like me, I'd suggest you to wait. This is just the first wave of the devices, and as I can see, they're not that reliable. Poor MacBook Air, I wish you were alive. And also some software is not there yet. For example, the Brew installer is a mess on M1 right now, so you have to consider that. But in the end, it's your call and your money. If you have any questions or thoughts, I'll be waiting you in the comments. Hit a like if this video was useful for you and consider subscribing. It's been Alex and see you at the Geek's Table. Bye-bye.